So is it better to sit or is it better to stand when doing work, at least as it relates to focus and productivity? And the answer is for every 45 minutes in which you are focusing on something like a phone or a tablet or a book page, you want to get into Magnuseller panoramic vision for at least five minutes. And the way that I suggest to do this is actually to take a walk, ideally outside. So for every 45 minutes or so, try and get five minutes of relaxing your eyes. We are mainly going to focus on how we arrange our physical environment and indeed how we arrange ourselves in that physical environment in order to bring out the best in our neurobiology. That is how to put ourselves into a heightened state of focus by virtue of things as simple as where we place our screen relative to our eyes at a given time of day. Believe it or not, there's excellent research on this and there's excellent research, for instance, on whether or not you should or should not listen to music, whether or not you should use things like binaural beats and if so, what frequency of binaural beats. By the end, you will have a checklist of things that you can do to optimize your workspace on any budget. The first variable we want to think about in terms of workspace optimization is vision and light. On a previous episode of the Huberman Lab podcast devoted all to habits, I talked about the importance of dividing your 24-hour day into three different phases. And for those of you that haven't heard that episode, I'm just going to briefly summarize what I described. From the time you wake up in the morning until about six or seven or eight, sometimes nine hours later, your brain is in a unique state. It is in a state of high levels of dopamine, a neuromodulator, and high levels of epinephrine, as well as hormones like cortisol and so forth. Without going into the biology of those things, They set your brain into a state of high alertness. And this is true whether or not you indulge in caffeine or not. I know some of you say, oh, I really don't wake up until the afternoon. I'm much more alert and focused in the afternoon. We will talk about that phase of the 24-hour day in a moment. But that early part of the day is a time of day in which, for sake of workspace optimization, being in a brightly lit environment can lend itself to optimal work throughout the day, not just during that early phase. And so... While on many episodes of this podcast, I've also emphasized the importance of getting morning sunlight in your eyes within 30 to 60 minutes of waking. Not as often, but now and again, I will also mention that it's important to light your daytime environment as brightly as you safely can. So if you are going to be doing work in this early, what I call phase one portion of your day, you want to have as much light and indeed as much overhead light shining on you as safely possible. Now, of course, you don't want to so bright that it's glaring and you have to squint, et cetera. But you want as much light as is safely possible. And you can do that a couple of simple ways. One is if you do own or you're in an environment where you have overhead lights, turn on those overhead lights. What's special about overhead lights for setting alertness is that the neurons in our eyes, which are called melanopsin ganglion cells, that's the fancy name, melanopsin ganglion cells are mainly enriched in the lower half of our retinas in our eyes and view the upper visual field. Those neurons send little wires to an area of our hypothalamus right above the roof of our mouth that creates a state of alertness. Now, early in the day, we want to be as alert as possible. And this phase one of our circadian cycle is when we are best at doing analytic detail type work. Contrary to what most people do, which is to look down at their laptop, tablet, or phone, If you want to be alert and you want to maintain the maximum amount of focus for whatever it is that you're reading or doing, you want that screen or whatever it is that you're looking at to at least be at eye level and ideally slightly above it. Now, I haven't seen many workspaces that take advantage of this very hardwired neurobiological fact. So what should you do with this information? Well, if you're somebody who sits down to do work and starts to feel sleepy or simply unfocused, unable to attend, to whatever it is that you're doing. I highly recommend that you take your laptop or tablet. I do hope that most people aren't doing serious work on their phones because it's such a small visual window and we can talk about why that's an issue later. And the idea would be to place that screen of your tablet or your laptop or other computer and try and get it elevated at least to nose level, your nose level, or even higher. I realize that can be complicated to do. I've long just used a stack of books or I'll sometimes take a box and turn it upside down and set it there. Uh, I do use a mixed standing seated desk. I'll talk about that in a few minutes. There are a number of different ways that you could do this. You could wall mount a a monitor. I think many people are working with laptops. It's a little bit harder to, to do that with a laptop. Some people though will configure a second screen. You have to decide what's right for you and your budget. But 
Again, in addition to having a brightly lit room to be able to focus and attend to whatever it is you're working on, you want to have that screen position high in your visual environment. Now, you wouldn't want it on the ceiling necessarily, although that would be pretty cool. Um, you, but you do want it above you. This accomplishes a number of things. In addition to making you more alert, you also get away from the so-called text neck. You know, people are starting to look more like C's nowadays, the, the shape of, of the letter C, because we're constantly looking down. With reference to posture, there are beautiful data illustrating that when we are standing up, those same neurons in our brainstem, locus ceruleus neurons, which release, I should mention, things like norepinephrine and epinephrine, those neurons become active when we are standing. They become even more active when we are ambulatory, when we are moving. But when you sit, they become a little less active. And when you lie down, and indeed any time that you start to get your feet up above your waist or your head tilted back, those neurons fire less and neurons in your brain that are involved in calming and indeed putting you to sleep start increasing their level of firing. It's a really beautiful system. So beautiful, in fact, that there are studies that show that as you adjust the angle of the body back, you actually get a sort of dose-dependent increase in sleepiness and calmness and a dose-dependent decrease in alertness. And so, as we were all told to sit up straight or even better, to stand up straight, and now I'm also telling you to get that visual thing that you're attending to, screen or otherwise, up in front of you or, or ideally above you, those things combine to generate maximum alertness. So you can think about how you might work this into various aspects of your homework environment or office work environment. So as you can tell, we're starting to layer in the various things that you can do. First, brightness in the room. Second, get that screen up and try and put yourself into a posture for work that lends itself or promotes alertness, if indeed you want to be alert for that work. For every 45 minutes in which you are focusing on something like a phone or a tablet or a book page or your computer, you want to get into magnocellar panoramic vision for at least five minutes. And the way that I suggest to do this is actually to take a walk ideally outside. So for every 45 minutes or so, try and get five minutes of relaxing your eyes. This is something that's not often done, especially in today's homeschooling and where people are, uh, where kids are going to school by Zoom and adults are working by Zoom. This is a serious problem. People are getting eye fatigue. They're getting headaches. Indeed, some people are getting migraines. They're having all sorts of issues, neck pain. Much of that, if not all of that in some cases, can be alleviated by this 45 to five rule. For every 45 minutes of focused work that you do, get five minutes where you get outside or if you have to be indoors where you can dilate your gaze. Now, some of you may be saying, well, that spits in the face of your 90 minute rule. You're trying to, you've told us before that we should focus for 90 minutes. I would still want you to take breaks within those 90 minutes if you're looking at a narrow piece of visual world, meaning at a phone or a laptop or so forth. And again, the best way to do this would be to go outside, just relax your eyes, look off into the distance. Looking at a horizon will automatically trigger this panoramic gaze, which is very relaxing to the eyes and will allow you to go back into a focused work bout. The one thing you absolutely do not want to do is to go outside and check your phone. Because if you're outside checking your phone or you're taking a break and checking your phone, you're still in that vergence eye movement. So is it better to sit or is it better to stand when doing work? at least as it relates to focus and productivity? And the answer is both. There have been a number of systematic studies exploring what are called sit-stand desks. So these are desks that can be set to a height that makes standing the best practice, and then they can be lowered to a height that makes sitting the best practice, or the easiest practice, I should say. And it turns out that just sitting is terrible for us, okay? And there's an enormous number of studies out there that point to the fact that People who sit for five or six or seven hours a day doing work have all sorts of issues related to sleep, neck pain, cognition suffers, a number of cardiovascular effects, even digestion. There may even actually be some almost pressure effects on the pelvic floor and things of that sort, depending on the chairs that one uses. But that people who stand are in a slightly better situation where many of those health metrics improve, but that people that do a combination of sitting and standing at the same desk throughout the day or move from one desk to another if they don't have a combination sit-stand desk, that's going to be best. People who decreased their sitting time by about half each day. So they took, let's say they were working for um, seven hours a day, 
three and a half hours of the, the, that day, they decide to stand. And it's not even clear that it matters that they do all those three hours in one bout or they divide that up into shorter bouts of a half an hour and then sit for half an hour, et cetera, alternating back and forth. Showed incredibly significant effects on reduced neck and shoulder pain, increase in subjective health, vitality in uh, work-related environments, and perhaps most importantly for sake of today's discussion, improvement in cognitive conditioning and the ability to embrace new tasks and cognitive performance. What does this mean for you and me? Well, I've long used a standing desk or some variation thereof. What this means is that we should probably spend about half of our work time standing and about half of it sitting, but not all sitting or not all standing. If you had to do all one or the other, standing is going to be better than sitting. What happens if we just stand? Well, that can also generate some postural issues in terms of stabilization and fatigue. You know, I I have a good friend um, who's in the movement and uh, physical rehabilitation and physiology space. His name is Kelly Starrett. Um, He's very impressive in all those domains. And he always says, you know, we weren't designed to sit all day, but we also weren't designed to stand all day. And I think that's true. That said, most everybody, at least in the U.S., is not getting sufficient cardiovascular exercise or movement throughout the day and standing at one's desk can improve some of those health metrics and again can improve productivity probably because of those postural effects that i talked about earlier that when we lie down there tends to be less alertness in our in our brainstem if you will there's less activation of those brainstem circuits involved in alertness and indeed the circuits that involve a kind of a calming effect on the body get activated and as we become upright standing or seat or sitting, but especially standing, then those brainstem circuits for alertness kick on, which are going to make it easier to remain focused. 